guys, welcome back to another Bible study Saturday. Today we have Brother Gio and Brother Jazze. Today we're going to be going over um, John chapter 6. And to begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by Brother Gio. And the ending prayer will be by me. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done. Lord, as your sons, we sit at your feet. As you sit on the throne, yearning, Lord God, seeking to know more about you, to get a touch from your hand, to get closer to you, O oh Lord, for our relationship to become more and more intimate. So I pray even as we delve into your word, Lord, that, would, that it would be as unto a mirror, that we would be able to see ourselves in it, that it would provide correction, that it would provide direction, guidance, as your Holy Spirit releases understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and power. May the revelation that you give us, Lord God, permeate our hearts. May the understanding that you give us, Lord God, transform our minds. And, oh, Lord, I pray even now, Father God, that our tongues would never be the same, Lord God. The words that come from our mouths, Lord God, would flow from the abundance of love that you've stored in our hearts from the reading of this word. May our actions bring forth fruit, Father God, that pleases you, Lord. And, oh, Lord, I pray even now that we would be obedient to whatever you give to us today from the reading of this word. I thank you for this opportunity. May you continue to allow us this opportunity, Lord God, to delve into your word. And I pray that all that we receive today, Lord God, that you would direct us to someone else to share this testimony with, to witness to, oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your divine way, Father God. May this truly be a divine encounter. May we never be the same from this study, oh Lord. We trust in you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, I know we went a little bit further than the goal last time, so I think we're gonna we're gonna stay at what twenty two and, and do it up do it over again. Yeah. yeah. You stopped at twenty three last week. Twenty three, right? All right. So we we'll just go back up to twenty two and then we'll we'll keep going and see if we can get through. So the day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was, an, there was none other boat there, save the one whereunto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. And when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when come, camest thou hither? And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did, ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth into unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on me whom he hath sent. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of, he for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. 
They said, then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no case, and may no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should rise or raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which, she this with, which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Talk to me, Ezra. You have any idea what's happening right now? The people met up with Jesus. I mean, Jesus was saying that you don't believe me. Uh, well, you believe me just because, like, the miracles I've done and not, like, truly believe me because of, like, what uh, I can really do, how I could change your life. And he's talking about how all the stuff that Moses did, it was it was through God, was through God that he, he was able to do all them things. For, for the people. And something else after that. I don't remember. Okay, okay. Jay, what you got? You're good. You're good, though. You're good. As you remember the um, the miracle he did in the beginning? Yes. What was that? I remember it, but I can't remember it. Um, I'll, give you, I'll give you a clue. Some fishes. Oh yeah, um, with the with the the fish and the and the loaf of bread, they, they baking sawfish. That's what y'all do in um Guyana, no? Yeah, is that baking or is that? No, it's baking. <laughs> no, it's baking sawfish. You just gave them baking sawfish. <laughs> Basically, um, I mean, yeah, for, you 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 on you on the right track, um, as. Um, exactly what you said. Um, I just want to touch where he said. Um, all right, so right here you see um, the physical need was met, but um, Jesus wasn't done. He, his true purpose wasn't necessarily just to meet the physical need. Yes, he's concerned about it, but he always sets up the situation so he can address the physical condition and then meet the physical need. So now the people are wondering, are you fed us? Now you did. We're following you. But God is saying, Jesus is saying to them, that that's not really why I came. I came because I want you to understand that my father offers true bread from heaven. What is true bread, Ezra? What is that? What is he talking about? Life. Through who? Jesus. You had this question mark in your face. Life. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, am I, am, is this the answer? Like, <laughs> nah, you know, so, so you say answer, but you kind of hesitant if it's wrong, right? That's why you just kind of like make a little face, and whenever they say so, you be like, oh, I, I. I guess. But what you said though, who, who's it? Well, what's the true bread? I said it's true bread is life, and you asked through who, and I said through, through Jesus Christ. Yeah, through through Jesus Christ. Um, and that's essentially where we're at. Um, again, we see he says, those who come to me will never be hungry again, and those who believe in me will never thirst. And we, we've seen that before, right? We've seen the whole discussion on thirst a couple chapters ago. You remember? And the people who focus on the physical thirst, not the spiritual. Mm -hmm. You remember the encounter he had, or who he had it with, when he began speaking about thirst? The lady from Guyana, she was by the well. <laughs> hey, you remember that story? The lady by the well. Come see a man. All right. So, since, same thing here. So, again, he didn't really go to the well to catch water. He went there to meet a physical need. And here's the same thing he's saying to these people I'm here to meet a physical need. Make sense? All right. 
That's a good word, man. That's, that's one of those prosperity preached uh, sermons. But it's still good. Like, I, what physical need do you have for the Lord to meet today? Is it, though? I feel like the prosperity sermons are more like, oh, God's going to make you prosper and rich if you if you believe in him. All right, I take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm thinking, like, nah, because what physical need do you have? Right, and then I guess you go you, you delve a little deeper, and then you know, how can that spiritual need cause you to come to him for spiritual feeding? Oh, yeah, yeah, you maybe you're right. It's not, yeah, <laughs> so that's a little bit more profound. All right, guys. <laughs> um, okay, so you understand how. Jesus is saying, you understand why he calls himself the bread of life or bread from heaven. Yes and no. Okay, so he compares himself with manna. You heard of manna before? Yeah. Manna was what God fed the children of Israel while they were in the desert. So imagine you're in the middle of nowhere and life seems like it's just like you're alone and you're in the middle of this hot place, abandoned, and you just, you have no one or no thing. But some way, somehow, uh, a water fountain with some food just appears in its provision. That's, that's what manna was for the, for the children of Israel. Like, that was their sustenance. That allowed them to stay alive and keep moving forward through the wilderness as they left Exodus. Jesus is not only saying that I'm there to feed you physically as he did with, um, as we just mentioned with the food, um, the fish and the, lo and the loaves of bread, but he's saying that I'm the reason why you have life. I am the life. I am the bread that will feed you. Makes sense. Makes sense. I was speaking to one of the other youth from our church yesterday and the comment was made Nah, like, you know, you got to live your life a little bit. I was like, oh, are you really living your life a little bit? <laughs> like, what life are you living? Like, or do you not know because of the decisions you're making, you're actually dying? Stop. Couldn't say nothing. Couldn't say nothing. Finish. That's, that's like a, that's a question where you hear, you like. That's something Jesus would say. And, and then just like, like, what? You can't, you can't really. I'm alive, I'm breathing, what are you talking about, All right? And it's just like, Jesus is telling us that if we come to him, we will, have, we will hunger no more. If we believe on him, we'll thirst no more. That's good about the Holy Spirit. Right? Believing in him and thirsting, all right? He'll have waters flowing from your belly, Jay. Holy Spirit, that thirst. So, that's, that's what Jesus is saying to these people. And of course, here we go with the Jews. Look at verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. So remember what we learned about Jesus today. Jesus is the bread of life. Got that? Just to make sure you, because okay, I know you keep, you keep a nose, which I said the focus is learning about Jesus, right? Some things that we want to learn about Jesus. Verse 41, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves. Like they were speaking amongst themselves. But Jesus still heard them, right? Murmur not among, among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father with ha which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. What does that mean for you, Ezra? I don't want to just skip over that. Uh, the first part we say that 
nor to yet the guard nor yet the Jesus. That makes perfect sense. But then, what you said after that? <laughs> so, Jay, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, right? When the Father draws him, he uses the Holy Spirit to do so, yes? All right. So you have the three of them almost like with different responsibilities, but all working towards the same goal. Yeah. So the father would see his creation, his sons. I need that one. It's time. Yeah. He sends the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit begins to work on this one. And next thing you know, this one either has like a divine encounter or like a life-saving event. Um, or finds himself in church and then they give up, they surrender and they're done quote unquote living their lives. And now they give their lives to Jesus and now Jesus accepts them. Mm -hmm. So you see how they have the three work in tandem. Yeah. This is a perfect text to, to what's the word? Explain. That explain that captures how, um, they, the, the triune God or the, the Trinity um, works together, um, same, but separate in functions. And yeah, this, this text captures that just exactly how Gio sent it. So when you, when you went up there, as in you, you was crying, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't, I won't, I won't. Here's a famous line, right? I won't do it again. 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 <laughs> You you yourself didn't didn't initialize that right. There's always a tug, always been a tug on your heart. I gotta get back to. I gotta get right. Right. You ever messed up and, and you know something just don't feel right within you. And you're like, yo, I gotta gotta get back to God. Right. So that's the Holy Spirit working in you, pulling you back. Right. I like to look at it as a magnet. Right? Um, God is the magnet, right? We know that that two sides, it was the positive sides, right? They're, they're pulled together, joined together, right? If you try to pull them away, it's it's hard, right? And sometimes what we do is we pull away from God and then everything comes in the middle. Sin, uh, bad behavior, everything God said we shouldn't do, we do. And so we kind of get a little bit separated, right? But God his positive side of that magnet never flips around. Right? Right. He's still always pulling. And so the Holy Spirit is always pulling, uh, pulling you back, pulling you back to God. I don't want, I don't want, yo, that's good because I think it's separate. I think it's positive and negative attract. Mm -hmm. And positive and positive go apart. They, 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 they push apart. Right. You just said God is the positive and we're the negative, and mm -hmm. still God is drawing himself to us. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. So, um, bro, understand that the Father sees his creation, he sends his spirit, he begins, the spirit begins working on the inside of you, and then you answer the call. You surrender yourself to Jesus. And then what does Jesus say at the end? He says, I will draw him, right? Father, which hath sent me, I will draw him. And I will raise him up the last day. You know what he's talking about, right? Oh, that's the part you say you don't know. Raise him up the last day. So once the Holy, while the Holy Spirit is working on you and you surrender yourself, and you say, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, right? Jesus says, I will draw you closer to me, All right? And then he says, on the last day, resurrection day, like, oh, okay. when everything gets crazy, or, you know, if you're still here, right? Or if it happens tomorrow, or even today, Jesus says he will raise you up with him to heaven. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Don't worry about it. So it's all good. It's all good. I mean, you may, you might, you might be fortunate and blessed enough that you don't even have to see death. You just, just get lifted up, all right? <laughs> so, um, forty-five says it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. 
Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God, he hath seen the Father. So, God is so, I don't know what, what word to put, but God is so God that we can't stand in his presence. Like, we can't see God. Like, it's it's almost like like looking at the sun. Like, your eyes will come peel out of your head. It's just the 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 power of the presence of the sun is just it's too much to bear. Yeah. So he's saying like, so no, nobody saw God face to face except the son of God, right? Because they're one, right? So, but he's saying in verse 45 that it says they shall be taught of God and every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the father comes to me. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about things of the past, like the old Testament, right? Um, in verse 47 it says verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me has everlasting life I am the bread of life your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they are dead Jesus is slapping them in the face about this manna that they're all excited about he's saying he's the true bread he says this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die, speaking of himself. It says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. And if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Jesus is not telling us to eat human beings. Let's clarify that. He's not telling us to be cannibals. What do you think he's saying? By him saying he's the bread of life, like he's talking about two bread that came from heaven, not the bread elevens, not the bread ones. <laughs> he's talking about the bread manna and the bread Jesus. He's like, yo, the bread that my father sent, the manna that you're all like bent out of shape about that I'm talking about. They ate that bread. And this, they dead, finished. Mm -hmm. But me, I'm saying I'm the bread. If you eat of me, then you'll live forever. What does that mean to eat? Like, why is he saying to eat him? Because the same way how we need, the same way how we need bread or like food to be able to live. Physical food, right? Physical food is like exact same thing with God. Your life would like really be miserable is awful without without Jesus. Life is already tough as it is, but then when you take Jesus out of the equation, you're just making it worse for yourself. All right. So he's saying, he's saying the spiritual food, right? Like the Bible. It's like he wants you to eat the spiritual food. He's just trying to um trying to find a word. Uh, you know, forget it. He's just trying no, to he was preaching. No, yeah. it was good. No, no, it was good. I was trying to find a way to like come to use how he connect the food to like a spiritual thing. Cause you know how they have words that some, I was trying to find some of them English words that I learned in class to try to, to use, but I don't remember. Nothing. See, you just confirmed that y'all don't speak English in the Caribbean. <laughs> you just confirmed it. Boys, it's some English word that I learned. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. Y'all speak another language. That's what I try to tell you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> so when Jesus is telling you to eat of Him, right? Eat His flesh. He's talking about reading the Word, being in a relationship with Him, getting that spiritual food, right? Yeah. Prayer, fasting. Becoming more like him. Yeah. Yeah, that's the goal. And he says, he says, it's not here in this text, but he says, man shall not live by bread alone, right? But every word that proceeded out of my mouth, right? And also the word of God. Okay, so um that's that's exactly what he's, he's calling us to do. And he's inviting us to <laughs> eat his flesh. <laughs> Really, to accept him as our Lord and personal Savior, to have a relationship with him, as Gio said, right? and having that relationship 
um, is the only way we can sustain um, our spiritual life. The only way we can satisfy um, that thirst and that hunger is through or by that relationship we have with him. Bro, your, your first sermon or how you want to entitle this video, are you hungry? Did you eat? Like, yo, yo, you, you ate today? You, you had, did you eat today? All right, that's what you're gonna entitle this. This, this. <laughs> did you eat today? Are you hungry? Did you have some bread? Yo, I'm telling Ezra about his sermon. You know, you, you know, God gave that. You know, God gave that to you, sir. You. Know. <laughs> I knew you was gonna say. I was like, let me see if I can hurry up and start going. Let me start being real fast. Yeah. That's a that's a preacher right there. When people talk it. And I hit you. Oh, yo, that's a word. Let me write that down. All the time. Yo. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, one of the, like the day, if that comes anyway, the day that I'm on the pulpit and I'm I'm talking, I'm be like, yo, I, I can't stand you, babe. Yo, I just, <laughs> just do it. Yo, um I'm gonna pull up for the live too. The live, right? <laughs> I'll be there in person. Son. I I don't know why it comes to me that way, but it is what it is. I'm I'm just I'm gonna just keep doing what I'm doing and then allow God to keep doing what he's doing. Absolutely. Um Okay, so the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, This is verse fifty two. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? Like what? Wants to eat people? What are you talking about? Yeah. All right. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him as the living father hath sent me and I live by the father. So he that eateth me even shall, even he shall live by me. This is that bread, which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Jesus is telling us to drink his blood and eat his flesh. Dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> all right, I see it all in your face, like question marks. Like, I see it all in your face. Yeah, I understand what he's trying to say. I'm saying, like, going... How do you put that in words? Going into their, to, into dumps, into their perspective, I, I could tell they was confused when he was talking. Right? Yeah. Me yeah. and drink your blood. What? Yeah. You gotta be a vampire or something to do that. Mm -hmm. What you think you do though when you you've done communion, Ez? Nah. Okay, but you've witnessed yeah. communion being done, right? So it's the same, same in a in a sense, um, the same thing that we're doing at at that time. We're partaking of His body and His blood. All right, essentially remembering all that he has done for us. Jesus here is speaking just about the relationship, not specifically about the Lord's Supper, because that didn't come yet. Right? But he's speaking specifically about having that relationship um, with him. All right, so not literal blood, not literal flesh, but just being joined to his life right, through that relationship with him. Cool. I'm glad you said no about communion because I, I I I used to didn't take it either. Like I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. I just wanted I didn't even want to just join the party. Um, I believe we will read about no. I don't. That's not in the Gospels, right? Communion. I think it's Paul. It's in uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians. One say twelve. I think Paul talks about it, and I think I think it's even a penalty for taking partaking in communion and you're not like I think consecrated or 
Like, if you eat and drink unworthily, you eat and drink damnation unto yourself. Yeah, so um, definitely something we could, we could learn about um, after we're done with this study. Yeah. Wait, but isn't it like an age limit to like the communion? Oh, there is it? Bro. Because that's why I never went and did it. Because I've always seen communion done like through my whole church. Like, I just never partake in it. Because I just, I thought it was just an adult thing. The, the so, problem too with, with, the problem too when it's, when it's done, it's not explained what it means. Like they read that scripture, straight King James. What is damnation? What what is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I remember one Sunday I did it, and I had to explain it because you read the Sunday to Sunday, and people just doing it to do it, Gio. Because, or they say if you're saved, you do it. You got to move from that point where we just tell people to do stuff because. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> God, for me, like I gotta have an explanation of why I need to do it. Yes, using these words. Um, I mean, don't even know why they're doing it. They just do it because they see themselves doing it. Yo, if you only do something, you, I gotta have an explanation to it. There was a story, bro. I forgot. I think Pastor Ball said it, but one one of those preachers I came to visit, and he was like, "It might have been him." Yeah, it might have been Pastor Ball, and I think he was like, "Um." You know, this man's wife grew up, this man's wife, he would always prepare the fish. And she would, he would always cut, it's either fish or, tur- it was something, to some animal, whatever, she would prepare it. She always cut the head off um, and the tail or something like that. I think I anything, right? And then, yeah. and she was like, and he was like, yo, honey, why, why do you always like cut this part off of the animal? And she was like, I don't know, my grandmother did it. And so I did it. Okay. And the grandmother was like, I don't know, I did it because I saw my mother do it. And, and and then so the the great grandmother was like, I did it because it couldn't fit in the stove or something like that. So I, that's just the tradition that I kept. Yeah. And as Ron, if we're not careful, bro, we're gonna continue to pass down these traditions. And we're gonna lose people. Yeah. And people are gonna be lost and it's gonna be no foundation, man. So when pe- like like times like this where we can't come together in church and visit each other, and we sort of kind of like build our own relationship with God now. Like we have to rely almost on ourselves almost. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. to rely more on myself than this. Yeah. And and that's that's why that's why I'm like I'm really like I'm questioning us like yo why are we such in a rush to get back into the church building like did we even ask God why we're out of the building All right. what are we supposed to be doing okay. I really feel like this but I know this quarantine and stuff happened on purpose obviously God let stuff happen for a reason and to me I think the reason behind it is for like the church folk to really be able to like truly like build a relationship with God, because to be honest with you, before quarantine, I wasn't in my Bible at all. The only time I would pick up my Bible is if I'm doing a video. Other than that, I'm not seeing my Bible. But because I was forced to be home, I'm like, you know what, let me just pick it up. Then I just started doing it on a consistent basis, like like every day for like a good 20 to 30 minutes, I'm in my Bible have my little worship sessions and stuff. And then through that, I was able to start building my relationship more with God. And if court would have happened, that wouldn't have happened because I would have been too busy. On, ah, I got school over here. I got I to gotta do these videos. I got to do this. I got to do that. My mind would have been too focused on everything else. So in a way, I'm, I'm actually glad that quarantine. But the negative effect to it, I'm not glad about that. It, it does have it's two two fold. Yeah. Um, but the greater is is or the the first thing you said is, is you know obviously the better part of it. So thank God for that. Just continue to grow, man. Continue to grow in God. That's what it's all about. Just as you spoke, bro, like <clears throat> you, what's your motive behind these videos? Like maybe that even needs to change. Like you said you wouldn't pick up your your Bible unless you were doing a video. So like, what's your motive for doing a video? Uh, 
To me, don't answer that. That's rhetorical. I just want you to think about that. And why are you really doing the video? Like, is it, is there any, like, is there even like a pinch of salt size wise of, like, in your motive of, um, like, are you doing it for like, followers are you doing it for money are you doing it like is it just a pinch of salt because god will try to purge that ounce of ill reasoning for trying to post these videos granted the byproduct may be money and publicity and whatever but he just wants to make sure that you're ready for what can potentially come your way like so let's just say you do blow up and you have these followers, right? Like right now, like while we're in the trenches and you're learning about God so that when people ask you questions, you can then answer them for yourselves because you learn about God yourself and you have a relationship with him. That's probably what he's preparing you for. So your little 10, 15 followers right now, that's cool. But when you, if God allows you to expand, you'll be able to expound on his word on your own. See what I'm saying? So just like I, just think, I, I always try to think like, what does God want us to do? And it's, you guys, Jay, sometimes I'm not thinking that way. <laughs> and I got to call him up and he got to put me in check. But that's what it's about too, right? The relationship that you build, not just with God, but with his people. Come on. So um, just something to think about. We are real deep in jail, this whole film call. <laughs> No, bro. Sometimes, nah, true. It, and nah, when you said that too, it, it strike me because it, automatically it made me think of worship leaders. Um, you can't put out what's not in you, right? And so, it, you putting out content, um, it, it gotta first be in you, right? So, and it connects right back to the text. You gotta eat and drink of Jesus Christ, His body, His flesh and his blood All right so when you get to that point where you you forget about us old men you're like yo i don't need you for your you, i don't need you after my videos no more you start putting out content i know you know what's coming too right <laughs> <laughs> has to first be in you remember that I, I wouldn't do that i wouldn't be like i don't need y'all no more i wouldn't well I'm going to try my best to not. Uh, there you go. <laughs> you got it. Because I'll take you right to the scripture with my man, Peter. <laughs> denied, uh, Jesus. Chess was high, right? <laughs> I would never deny you. <laughs> never. Well, easy, Pete. You about to deny me three times. <laughs> okay. uh, so, um, just think something to think about. So, verse 60, let me make it be able to wrap this one up Might as well um any therefore of his disciples when they had heard this said this is a hard saying who can hear it when jesus knew himself knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it he said unto them does this offend you yo jesus could really 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 hear everything the second time we're hearing about people murmuring under their breath amongst each other and Jesus hearing it. Like, so, so mind, mind your thoughts, bro. Because Jesus knows those two. <laughs> mind your thoughts. Truth. Um, <clears throat> is what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were <clears throat> that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. So we see... Uh, You see Jesus reiterating the fact that the Father has to send the Spirit in order for you to answer the call and receive Jesus, right? You're seeing that again. Um, but now he's also talking about some people who are in his circle of the amongst the disciples that are not going to believe in him and betray him. 
I'm not even going to say it because I'm going to be talking to myself, but I'm going to say it anyway. Can you do something for someone knowing that they're going to hurt you anyway? Nah. You didn't even think, nah. Great. All right. Nah, that's tough. See, I'm not on the level of Jesus. I'm not there yet. Yeah, thank you. You're right. It's it's doable. Progress. I'm not it's there tough. Yet. Right, right. It's not perfection, it's progression, right? I'm going to associate with nobody that's going to do anything bad to me. So. I hear you. I hear you. That's where you are right now, brother. We're going to talk 10 years. Maybe five. I'm not even saying two. Could be next week. I could do a seven week, right? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all about to jinx it. It's not a jinx. What are you talking about? It's not, a, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. When, whenever, though, you notice that shortcoming, though, um, that's where your God help me. You know what I mean? Help me to do this. Help me to do as your word says. Help me to be more like you. Um, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? So now the people are leaving him. And now Jesus is questioning his disciples like, Oh, so they left me, so y'all gonna leave me too? All right? Y'all supposed to be my day ones? Of course, you know, Jesus, you know. Of course, that's a rhetorical question, right? He was like, mm-hmm. So then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? I'm never going to forget G-O and J. Word up. <laughs> and we just talking about it, right? Here he go. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, have not I, not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Okay, so yeah. how many of them walked away? Because he said that some of them walked away. So how many of them walked away? So remember he came, um, where he came from, Jay? He was... Uh, he came across, I think it was from Galilee to Capernaum. Galilee. Yeah. He went from Galilee to Capernaum. And he was like, oh, there's no ship. Like, where did it go? And they followed him across the seas. And now you got all these people following him. And remember, we started off, he was saying, when we started the scripture, started this week, it started off with him saying that um, a bunch of people follow him, not for the miracles, but for the the manner, I mean, for, for the food that he fed them. But once he started talking the truth, like, yeah, don't get so caught up on the fish and the five loaves. I want you to focus on me for, for I am the bread of life. Mm-hmm. You know, like when the preacher started talking about you, as if he was with you last, last night, Saturday night, doing what you was doing when you was doing it. Right. And you kind of don't want to hear what he's saying, so you're like, nah, I'm, I'm off this, I'm out. You know, that's how, that's, you know. I, I hate when that happens. <laughs> so, so that's sort of kind of like what Jesus is doing. Like, I, he's speaking truth, and they don't want to hear it. But the truth shall set you free. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I, I specifically told one of the youth I spoke to yesterday not to do something. I was like, and here's the reason why, that's what the Bible says about it. I just spoke to the youth this morning before the call. So I did it. I'm so excited. I'm like, so excited. I wanted to hit it with the whole emoji, like, like shaking my head emoji. Like, just like, no. I, I just try to save them from regretting it later on. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, people got to learn the lesson. 
right? If you can't think, you must smell. I, I'll go, or you feel, whatever, how, how y'all say it? If you can't hear, you won't. If you can't hear, you won't feel. Yeah, yes. The answer like dust in there, isn't like a dust, you dust feel? No, no, no. Oh, maybe <laughs> Trini. Trini. Okay. Oh, oh, it's different. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember each, each, yeah. each, each island got their different accents, so you say stuff different. different. Yeah. It's different. Does, does is like will for Trini in a sense. You just feel. So if you, if you don't hear, you will feel. Yeah. They will say, if you don't hear, you does feel. We should have like a Caribbean study. So Straight can, Caribbean I'll talk, be, right? I'll give you educated, cause yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know they got Bible and Patwa. <laughs> yeah, let's pray. Let's close it. Let's close it. Let's close the study. <laughs> let's close the study. How? How? How would you even yeah. do that? Oh, I did. So, Lula, I really want to see somebody read that Bible. I really want to see that the Patwa version. I was struggling, son. No, I can't. That joint deep, deep. I really want to see somebody read that. Like, how, how would you eat? So, verse 71, how would you say that in Patois? Uh, let me see. Then did I speak to Judas and Simon Israel, one of the 12, would later betray him. That's, that's English, though. That's regular. So, yeah, that's that. Yeah, that one you can't. Let me see what could go. It all depends on, on, the, on the words. Uh, I can't. Mm mm. Mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> we gotta do that video. One, we gotta do that video. I'm telling you, it's gonna be hilarious. Gotcha. Yo, takeaways from today. Talk to me. Takeaway from today, um, the part where you mentioned that in order to get to God, you gotta get to the Son, but you also, but also the. I was about to say, son, God got to draw you in. By whom? The Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, gotcha. You got it. All right. What else you learn? I learned that Jesus knew from the jump that them people was going to betray him. Like, I knew like he knew that early. What people? His disciple. Well, one of his disciples. What's his name? Verse 71. Judas. Judas Iscariot. Make sure you say Iscariot because there's going to be more than one Judas we're going to learn about. I know his last name was Iscariot because I've never really heard anybody address him by like Iscariot. Oh, Judas. If you don't know, now you know. This is why you got to go into the Bible because the church just going sh- Get out a little piece of like the information that is well not necessary. Bro, we only got an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. can't. Like that's why you can't rely on what happens on from the pulpit on Sundays. That's just, that's just like a like a reinforcement or like 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 drinking like an inshore, like just to like keep you going. But it's not. It's supposed to get you to Monday. Yeah, exactly. Most people try to. And they get them get them through the week. Stretch that joint out. <laughs> and as soon as you leave church, sometimes it's done. You you gotta go home and eat again. Bruh. This is why it's important that you know the word. You know God for yourself. For yourself. It's one more thing I'm waiting for you to tell me. You learned about Jesus. That that we we got we got to eat the flesh of God and drink his blood. What does that mean for Ezra? Not literally. Not literally. But what, what it means is like I'm going right back to like with the whole bread and the water. You need water to be able to quench your thirst. You need bread to be able to put food in your system so you can be alive. Same thing with the flesh and the blood. They're the exact same thing but in a spiritual form. Without both, you're not able to live right. Not able to like, like have a a very like we're not peaceful life because life is not gonna be peaceful. Because obviously stuff's gonna happen up to down. But to kind of like, um, 
What what is it called when like um numb it to to kind of like numb it to like numb the, the all the stuff that life throws at you? You need Jesus. Okay. He he don't just numb it though, cause yeah. you numb something, it's temporary. It <laughs> may still be there. But I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Jesus is the bread of life. Just like we need to eat and drink to let survive physically, we need to eat and drink of Jesus to survive spiritually. Our bodies, just like physical food, has to expire. But our spirits live forever. The question is, what are we feeding our spirits with so that when it goes on and moves from this body that's decaying, where, where will it spend its eternity? And that all depends on what we're feeding it with. Are we feeding it with Jesus or are we feeding it with the world? Spiritually, did you eat today? I love how it transitioned from uh, faith in the beginning. And and around the 35, verse 35 region, so the transitions to love. (laughs) Um, And Jesus says that God... um, that this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of, or one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at one day. Same thing going back to the magnet, man. Even when you turn around and you're trying to escape from God, he is still drawing. It reminds me of that song that says that he, he will leave the 99 and go after the one. And I just thank God for his love uh, this morning for me, for us, that he is constantly, constantly chasing us down. Even when we're right with him, still chasing us to, to perfect us, to work on us, to mold us and shape us into his perfect, glorious image. And I just, I thank God for that. Man. I just rest in that, that God loves us despite all that we ever do, even when we want to betray and be like Judas, even when we question him, or even when we only go to him for miracles, for what he can do for us and not who he is to us, he still loves us. And so I thank God for that love this morning. Um, and yeah, that that's that's it for me. We just got to keep eating and drinking. And as you have said, what are you eating? What are you drinking? Bible is crazy. Bro, you should have read the Old Testament. I know the Old Testament is if, if it like love and hip hop, bro. I know. <laughs> Whatever. Remember, I don't know what the book is in, but when it was explaining with the whole tribe of and how that was formed, that was something else. Genesis. Okay, Genesis. So you get to like numbers and judges, Deuteronomy. First and second king, bro. Nah, you could dare make a movie. Like I think, I think like, I think like Cavell always like compared to Game of Thrones. Like I don't, I don't. I think I probably saw like one episode of that show, but mm-hmm. I've seen that. Yeah, she was like, "Yo, this is exactly what happened." Like, I, I low key think that people be getting getting their stories in the Bible and writing movies about it. <laughs> so. Guys, don't forget, man, outside of what we do this Saturday morning or what you may hear on Sunday, there's still five other days where you have to feed yourself. Yeah. So before you go and just rush to post a video, even if after you post it, like I, I really want you to go back and remember what we discussed in these things. Because we, we maybe if we're hitting you with a lot, I need you to say that. Like... I don't expect you to get it all, but at least, you know, have some, you know, two or three points that you can dwell on because 
I think as Christians, we just try to like, sometimes like some of us, we just try to consume it all and hear about it and everything, but we got to let that thing sit down and marinate and and really apply it. You know? I do do that. Like when we sit together and like thing it, I'm able to understand on a better scale. Cause like, if I'm at like an event or like we at church or something, it was just, I just it just be going too fast that I don't really like grasp majority of what they be talking about. Okay. So when I get into my own time or like we get together, I'm better able to understand it. Because even though like well you'll probably be from like let's say from like one all the way to fifteen, we'll go back and like break out the each scripture. So. So I'm uh, able to understand it better, really like grasp the information instead of like this, this, this happened, da, 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 and then just move on. And I see that. Yeah, I see that in you. Um, the best part is that we can go through these, these verses, and at the end, you can regurgitate it, right? You can go back and say, all right, this is what I've got. And it's not it's not what Elton said, right? Or it's not what Javel Gio said, right? You're able to put it in your own words and really um, explain it from your point of view, and that's the best part. And that we we see that, right? So it's good. Yeah, and then plus I got my notes together. That's cool. Thank you. Who, who praying out, bro? Me. About to do our closing prayer. Everybody, bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you, God. I'm glad that today we're able to come together as brothers to be able to discuss your word, God. We pray that all the key information that was spoken today unto us, God, that we're able to comprehend it and better understand it and better understand why you do same things, why same things happen, and why you let same things happen, God. And we just pray that we're able to piggyback of each piggyback off of each other. Even if one person don't understand it, if the other two understand it, we're able to help each other, God. We're able to help each other understand the word more, God. I pray that I don't just use this time to just like get in the word. The other five the other six days in the week that I'll be able to also get into your word more, God, and increase it every day from one scripture to two scripture to three scripture to keep on going, to just learn more, God. And I pray that I just don't take this time for granted. I pray that none of us take this time for granted, God, because a time in your word is a very important time and we will need to take it serious, God. And I pray that each and every week we're able to come back, God. And I pray that even when the theme, the popularity and all that come, that I don't forget where I came from. I don't forget who helped me along the way. I don't forget the key people that were there supporting me through everything, God. And I just thank you for Brother Gio and Jave to be able to be with me, continue to help me, continue to deal with me through all of my downfalls, God. I just pray that you um, continue to bless them, protect them through this week, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Yo, when your boss member we here, <laughs> Dude, yo, what you just said? So. <laughs> Taking a bus somewhere? What he just said? <laughs> what? You about to get on the bus and go somewhere? In translation. <laughs> yeah, please. Start making that money. Make sure he remember us. Why didn't he just say that? Where's the bus <laughs> come from? What bus is he talking about? Is a money bus coming to your house? What's he t- <laughs> Taking the 20. That's dumb. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. This is the end of the video. Next week, we'll be back with John chapter 7. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey with us. I hope you guys learned something from this. Pray that you guys keep on coming back every week to come on this journey with us to learn more about the Bible, learn more about the Word, and be able to comprehend it better. This is the end of the video. Please like And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the but and turn on the post notifications so anytime we upload a video you're able to get the alert peace